stream I'm going to start going over some of the breadcrumbs for those of you out there who are curious about the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar also known as quantum grammar it was brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffelin Colin Miller who passed away in the summer solstice of 2018 as you can see what I'm looking at here is the Wikipedia page for adjective, adjective, pronoun, David Windmiller. And it will tell you, and, and you can certify this by using the Wayback Machine, if you so choose, that this Wikipedia page has changed uh, many times. It used to say, and this is a paraphrase, it used to say that David Wynn Miller was a welder, <laughs> which he did claim to be a underwater welder, which is a very difficult job. <clears throat> He's claimed to teach that as well. But I have not looked at this Wikipedia page in, in a very long time, and I just gave it a cursory glance and it is it has been really uh, ransacked let's put it that way now to go along with the other videos and live streams that I've done regarding military psyops psychological operations there's a lot of truth mixed in with a smattering of lies. And a lot of times the objective is to get the person emotionally connected or vibe. Like, you catch a vibe when you read something about somebody. Like, okay, here, here's a great example, and I'll just use myself as an example. Maybe you go onto my YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. And you start watching the videos and you start watching the way that I conduct myself, my demeanor, so on and so forth. And for some reason, something about me just rubs you the wrong way. You just don't like the personality. Uh, so you shut it off. And you, you just don't want to watch it anymore. There's, so you can't really put your finger on it. But you just, there's just something about me you don't like. But then there's the other type of person that may do the same thing that you just did, but they're vibing with me. You know, they like, they're on the same wavelength. They feel like they have something in common with me. Or they, they start projecting personality traits onto me that may or may not exist. It's just like people do with celebrities and other people that they don't know that they see on the internet. They start thinking, oh, well... Now I have some kind of connection here. So they start vibing. And then they start listening to what I say. And they say, well, I know that's true. And I know that's true. And I know that's true. But then maybe I say something that's wrong. But they may not catch it because I've been right so many times. And then this one time I'm wrong. But they don't notice it. Because I've been right all the other times. It's the same principle as uh, military psyops, where they will present data to you. By the way, there is nothing on my YouTube channel that is intentionally wrong. If there are mistakes, I don't know about it. Uh, I have gone over everything with a fine tooth comb. And a lot of my most studious students 
have pointed out errors to me, which I fix. And you can see on my YouTube channel that I do publicly stop and correct multiple times. I've made public videos where I was writing my name incorrectly, so I made a public apology and corrected it. And I've done it many other times as well, and that comes with cultivating humility. Everybody makes mistakes. There is no one that is immune to being wrong. The point is, if someone is wrong, and you see that there's a mistake, it's how you approach it. Because if someone's going to tell me I'm doing something wrong or it's not correct, they have to provide a continuance of the evidence as to why it's not correct. And then they have to tell me how to correct it. Because you cannot present a problem without a solution. Because if you just present the problem, that's the sound of one hand clapping. It's like the people that go down to the corner and protest. They're just yapping in the wind. Makes no difference. For rule one, rule equal, problem, solution. So you have to tell me how to fix it and explain it to me. I'll probably fix it. Anyways, so that's the way military psyops work. So you can take a page like this, and then you start reading about David Wynn Miller, and then you start saying, well, you know, that's crazy. I, I agree with this, and I agree with that, and I know that's true. And then they put a lie in there, and you might not catch it because you're so in tune with what you think David Wynn Miller was like. I don't know if I'm clear on that or not, but it's pretty insidious the way the whole thing works. So I'm going to take a quick check here, see what we got going on here. All right, so I'm going to start going over this uh, his entry, the breadcrumbs. For those of you who are interested in learning about the history of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, most of it is on the internet. You just have to know how to find it. As I said, it says uh, adjective, adjective, pronoun, David Windmiller. Also styled, colon, David Ivan Wynn, colon, Miller. Was an American tool and die welder. Underwater welder. Pseudo legal theorist and leader of a tax protester group with the sovereign citizen movement. Right off the bat, uh, I don't agree with leader of a tax protester group. He never protested taxes. <clears throat> and I don't think he was ever within the sovereign citizen movement, because sovereign citizen is an oxymoron. You can't be a citizen and be a sovereign. And in this day and age, there is really no such thing as a sovereign. Not in a material sense, anyways. A self-proclaimed judge, that is true. Miller is best known for creating quantum grammar, a version of the English language to be used by people involved in judicial proceedings. That is not entirely true. It is not a version of the English language. It does not say quantum language. It does not say correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, language. It's grammar. There is a difference. The reason why the word grammar is used at the end is because it takes authority over what came before it. Authority comes at the end. It is a grammar that can be used with any language. English is a language. French is a language. Quantum grammar is a grammar. A lot of this is common sense stuff, folks. He asserted that his constructed language, which purportedly based on mathematics and includes unorthodox grammar, spelling, and punctuation and syntax, constitutes the only correct form of communication in legal processes. I don't agree with that either. I, I don't think he ever said that. That it's the only correct form of communication in legal processes. It's the only correct form of communication in a written manner, legal or otherwise, written. It's a written grammar. 
His views also include a variation of the straw man theory. People seeking remedy with Miller syntax in court have not met with success. That is definitely 100% not true. Uh, I have personal experience with that, as well as some of my best students have also had personal experience with what we would call success using quantum grammar in those foreign vessels and dry dots. His language is incomprehensible to most people. Again, it's not language, it's grammar. And that is true. Just because of how we've all been indoctrinated with how a certain specific way of reading and writing that's filled with modifications. So when we see something that uses position lodial phrases in only one verb per thought per sentence, it looks very, very strange. And the pleadings that use it are routinely rejected by courts as gibberish. That is true. That is true. Because number one, correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venues, don't plead anything. It's the farthest thing from a pleading. It's a claim. When you go into a foreign vessel and dry dock, i.e. a fiction court, and you plead, what are you doing? You're begging. Oh, oh, please, have mercy on me, judge. It's like that, you know? You're pleading. You're begging. Quantum grammar does not do that. It's the farthest thing from it. It's making a claim and holding a position. But it is true that it is routinely rejected by courts as gibberish uh, because either... Now, we can't make assumptions for other people because that's a trespass. But either, and this is what I think is going on, in my humble guess, they don't know what it is. They don't know it. So they do reject it because they don't want to cognize it. Or number two, they do know what it is, and they know what it can do. So they reject it out of hand. But that's another story for another day. It's also known as vacating. Since Miller's death, his language has been continued. It's not language, it's grammar. Continued usage by other people within the sovereign citizen movement. Again, with the oxymoron, sovereign citizen. Let's see, Miller lived in Ohio, he claimed that at the age of 25, he died for half an hour when an inept surgeon removed both his kidneys and adrenal glands. His heart restarted spontaneously while outside his body during autopsy. Following this, he said his IQ became 200, his endorphin levels were six times normal, and he stopped aging. Yes, he did claim those things. Miller's activism stemmed from his own frustrating experience with the legal system. True. During the 1980s, he went through a divorce proceeding and appeared pro se in numerous child custody hearings, 67 according to his website, losing every time. I'm not familiar with that number 67, but I have no reason to discount that. But the important thing is, is it says he lost 67 times. That's a lot of times to lose. But he didn't give up. Having been convinced that the judiciary was rigged and governed by linguistic maneuvering, true, and that the English language had been deliberately modified to enslave the people, maybe so, maybe not so. No way to certify that, really. He decided to override the system by developing his own theory of language, grammar, to be used as a form of legalese. No. I don't think... David ever categorized correct sentence structure as a form of legalese. Legalese is legalese. Correct sentence structure is correct sentence structure. One and one is one, one word, one meaning. So that is incorrect. Miller claimed to have created his language in 1988 by discovering the mathematical interface in the truth that certifies all 5,000 languages frontwards and backwards. According to Miller, the use of his grammar, not language, grammar, guaranteed successes in court cases, and it could also be used to eliminate taxes and disbar judges. All right, so there's a lot of mistruth in there. 
I don't think he ever said that he guaranteed successes in court stories. I don't think I've ever, uh, court cases, I don't think I've ever heard that. It could also be used to eliminate taxes. I don't think he's ever said that either. And disbar judges, he did say that. He did say that. In the following years, he promoted it through seminars, books, and videos. Miller's constructed language known in full as correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, shortened as CSS, CPSG. Well, yes, that's an abbreviation. Duh. These other ones, I mean, quantum grammar is the only other one I use, personally. Some of these I haven't even seen. Miller's design involves sentences that begin with prepositional phrases. Using the word for, it is easily recognizable, among other traits, by the constant and repetitive use of the phrase for the and with the. <laughs> and by the absence of action verbs except in gerund form meaning the ing that he and Russell J. Gould like to stick on to their facts, well, what they would call facts, but which actually in reality modifies them. And so the ing is a particle of negation. I don't personally use that because it is a gerund. It's a gerund modifier. So let's take a look at this sentence. For the forms of our punctuations are with the claim of the use. Okay, so there's a particle of negation. That is not correct. And then we have a full colon, which represents with the. With the full colon equals position nodial facts, hyphen equals compound facts equals known, comma space period, and thought, comma pause, and location utilities, and then another with the. Okay, so that is not correct. This full colon represents with the, and then it's followed by another with the. You would never have a with the and a with the. So this, to the noob, I guess you would call it, looks like it's something complicated, and it looks like, ooh, it's correct sentence structure, but it's actually not. Now, whether they did that on purpose or whether they don't know what the hell they're talking about, I'm not sure. I'd have to guess it's the second thing. And it ends on an of the, which is not correct. Because correct sentence structure would be formatted. For the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. Has to end in a by the. If it starts with a for the, it ends with a by the. Because for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. There are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. For his cause, of his concern, with his possessive, by his authority. Miller's ideas about language are notably rooted in the idea that only nouns have legal meaning. <laughs> That's not correct. A noun is a no-no. And again, it's not legalese. Legalese is legalese. Correct sentence structure is correct sentence structure. This had led Miller to arbitrarily recast words, definitions, and roles according to his own understanding and convenience. Now that is a mouthful right there, folks. In totality, what that is saying is true, but the way they're saying it is very malicious. So they're saying this had led Miller to arbitrarily recast words definitions. Arbitrarily as if it's just, you know, a roll of the dice, just like haphazard. Eh, maybe this, maybe that. That's not true at all. It took thousands of hours of study and research and parsing to create correct sentence structure finite means for words. And it is, according to his own understanding, and convenience. Right? Because you can only communicate from your own understanding or cognition. So that, that sentence is true, but the way that it's worded, it's very poisonous and malicious. Among the idiosyncratic rules of language he created, Grammar, not language, again. 
Sentences must contain at least 13 words and use more nouns than verbs. The sentence doesn't have to have at least 13 words. The shortest correct sentence structure would be for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, by the facts. That's the shortest. Um, and there's one verb per sentence, one thought per sentence. A preposition is needed to certify a noun. Replace the word noun with fact. And that is not true. A pres uh, positional and a lodial certify a noun. Because one is opinion, two is certification. Positional, lodial, certification. Then you put your fact in. Although the language grammar, oh, he pioneered, is un incomprehensible to most people. That's the second time they've said that. Miller asserted that it can end all forms of misunderstanding and conflict and called mainstream English language a fiction. Miller has also been described as a leading, as leading a linguistic cult. Hmm. I guess I've seen that before. Um, talking about, okay, after creating this language, Miller began styling his name as David Wynn. David Wynn colon Miller claiming that the punctuation marks are hieroglyphics that make him life. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard him say that the, the punctuation makes him life. And that without them, his name is two adjectives and a pronoun. That is correct. Oh, by the way, do you know what a hieroglyph is? You are looking at a page full of hieroglyphs right now. Any letter, number, squiggle, they're all hieroglyphs. Or hieroglyphics. So, that's nothing mysterious about that. In a variation of strawman theory, Miller claimed that the addition of hyphens and colons to a person's name makes the person a prepositional phrase. Okay, that's the goofiest thing I've read so far in this in this Wikipedia entry, even out, outside of Miller's heart restarting outside of his body. That is blatant uh, misrepresentation of what he said. He's never, ever said that. <laughs> it makes the man or woman a fact. The punctuated name then becomes copyright copy claim to the live life claimant, whoever the punctuated name belongs to. It doesn't make them a prepositional phrase. The person is thus identified as a fact existing... Oh, I just said that. Well, they said it makes a person a prepositional phrase and then identified as a fact. That's hilarious. Existing in the now time dimension. Because, folks, what do we have? All we have is right now. The past is the past. The future is the future. They don't exist. At least, not now. Get it? The names are written in this way are distinguished from the names listed at birth and in all caps as in a birth certificate which can identify the legal estate, not the living being in fact. Signing up to get a birth certificate allegedly creates a taxable person <clears throat> Okay. Who signed up for a birth certificate? Did you? When you were birthed in that operating room Did you say, bring the bill of the lading to me, let me sign it, and thumbprint it, and now I have my birth certificate. Did you do that? No, you didn't. Because guess what, folks? The birth certificate had nothing to do with you. You didn't consent to it. You weren't old enough to. Your parents did, or whoever your guardian was. They're the ones that did that. That was created without you. And when you reach the age of, we'll call it, cognition, where you're old enough to know better, you can go about extricating yourself from that, if you choose. And that's another story for another day. Therefore, Miller 
asserted that by adding punctuation to their names and by using his language, his grammar, in their tax return forms, people could avoid paying taxes. I don't think that he ever actually said those things. At least I can't find any evidence that he did, no video evidence that he said that. I think the closest thing he ever talked about taxes was learn how to pay your taxes with correctness. He never said avoid or try to get out of paying taxes because, again, that's incorrect psychology. No judge has ever accepted this argument, and in fact, many of those who have attempted to use it have ended up in jail. I don't know that no judge has ever accepted the argument because it's not an argument. It's a claim. There is no argument where the facts are present. When facts are present, there can be no argument. Many of those who have attempted to use it have ended up in jail. When you say many of those, I don't know what number that is, but I know that some people have ended up in jail and gotten quite a lot of time being accused of paper terrorism. The most notable one I can think of that comes to my head is Leighton Lionel Ward. Now you can look that up if you want to. I think he's doing 23 years for paper terrorism. And he was the federal postal clerk of David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould's federal postal court. Now there's a whole backstory to that that I'm not going to go into here. Maybe in a future one I'll go into it. But I've already done some videos on that. Uh, Canadian judge John D. Rook, who compiled various examples of pseudo-law in his 2012 Meads vs. Meads decision, commented that Miller's bizarre form of legal grammar, oh look, they call it grammar for once, is not merely incomprehensible in Canada, but equally so in any other jurisdiction. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Like, the, the thing that brings to my mind is this judge says it's not merely incomprehensible in Canada, but if you maybe go to Antarctica, you can't understand it there either. <laughs> I don't know if you y'all are getting a kick out of this as much as I am here. Miller East, that's pretty funny. All right, uh... There is no such thing as context-independent meaning in life or language. Let's think about that. There is no such thing as context-independent meaning. No such thing as context. So a meaning independent of context. That is true. I mean, I don't know what they're saying here. Why are they why are they saying that? That's rule one rule equal judge mechanics. You have to have a context. You have to get the whole story in order to get the meaning. You can't that's a violation of rule one rule equal. So I'm not sure why they put that there. Are they trying to insidiously insinuate that correct certain structure? has context-independent meaning, because if that's what they're trying to say, then that is definitely not true. It is based on all context, the context of the history and etymology of language. Miller has used and may have originated a scheme found in organized pseudological commercial arguments that cites the Universal Postal Union as a supranational authority the argument is that affixing a stamp to a piece of paper changes the authority under which it is governed. He assumed the title postmaster and calls his followers the adherents of the universal postal system. Miller claimed that he had a billion followers and that Bill Clinton and the entire Supreme Court of the United States were his students. Okay. He also claimed to have taught Kamala Harris for a month, I think it was. And if he taught her for a month, just based upon my own thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of doing this and teaching people all over Earth, 
I doubt Kamala Harris knows correct sentence structure. Um, as far as what they said about the uh, post office, this is true. Everything is shipping. Everything. You got stamps, you got bullet stamps on everything. You got bills of the lading, licenses, permits, passports. Everything is shipping. So for them to... It's... it's here, here's the bottom line, friends and neighbors. You have a fiction legal system, the foreign vessels in dry dock. They use stamps on their documents. They use little round bullet stamps. I have one. I have a couple, as a matter of fact. The same thing that they do in their system, any one of us can do as well, if we have the knowledge. And we have the grammar. They have their grammar. It's called legalese. They do what they do. They have their secret club, the Bar Association. The judges and, and attorneys are all part of that. If you didn't go to school for seven years or seven plus years, um, you're not a part of it. Also, of course, Freemasonry comes into it, which they have not even mentioned that Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller claim to be a 92nd degree Freemason. They have not mentioned that yet. So, oh, to finish that thought. So anything that they do, you and I can do. The challenge lies in the fact that they have the bigger guns and clubs and we only have ourselves. So, the authority that we hold comes from our knowledge and our ability to be basically diplomats and negotiate our way through the sea of space in a peaceful, neutral, honorable, and graceful, rule one, rule equal manner. They, on the other hand, don't have to participate with any of that because they can just physically force people to do stuff against their will. Which, that's an act of war and negates contract. So that comes around in a karmic sense and bites them in the ass. So that, that is true, though, that we uh, face the bigger challenge. But think about it this way. There are no guarantees. If you were to go and pay an attorney for some kind of, I don't know, whatever case you got going on in the fiction courts, if you were to go to pay an attorney thousands and thousands of dollars, you may win, you may lose. If you have a lot of money, your chances of winning increase exponentially. But it's arbitrary. It literally is arbitrary. That system is all about getting money and fleecing people. Now, if you walk in there and you use correct sentence structure, are your chances any better or any worse? You see what I'm getting at here? You, as a man or a woman, think of it as... This is the way I think of it. I do things to the best of my knowledge and be correct as I possibly can, using correct grammar. If I cross all the I's and dot all the T's, use correct grammar, correct volition, principles, the balance of the honor and the grace, position of peace and neutrality, maintenance of rule one, rule equal, judge mechanics, all that stuff. If I do all that, no one can ask anything more of me. I've done everything correct. I stand in my position. And then if they want to come and beat the crap out of me or do whatever, then that's what they're going to do. They were going to do it anyways. But at least I'm correct. Now, it's never come to that, actually. Because I've been 100% successful with all of my personal uh, federal postal court cases that I've, I've handled in my own postal courts. Now, this is in the confidential. My postal courts, not affiliated with any other postal courts. Mine. You can have the same thing if you know postal mechanics and correct sentence structure. But again, that's another story for another day. 
So I, I want to see if they mention anything about him being a Freemason. In 2001, he was banned from entry into Canada for two years after a number of judges had jailed people for contempt of court after they attempted to use his truth language to defend tax evasion. Charges in 2011, an Australian barrister who had been paid by his clients to attend one of Miller's seminars described Miller's teachings as the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Why don't they mention this barrister's name? So that, okay, that's another example of, or could be another example of military psyops. They just, that paragraph there, it's an interesting story. So it is true that in 2001 he was banned entry into Canada for two years. He has said that. He has said that. But then the second part, it says, an Australian barrister described Miller's teachings as, but they don't give the name. So you get one thing that might, that's true, and then the second thing that cannot possibly be certified because they didn't credential who the barrister was. But it's just adding more poison to the pot. And uh, alongside the things that are true, or that have been claimed by David, they put right next to that the lies or mistruths. I really can't believe. Oh, look. You have some example of cases. And. Oh, wow. You can find a plethora of breadcrumbs in these footnotes here. Let's see if they mention Leighton Lionel Ward. Jason Zelmer. Janice K. Logan. Or as Russell J. Gould would say, Little Janice. I think she's a real estate attorney nowadays, according to LinkedIn. Uh, okay, so I'm looking for two things here. I'm looking for Leighton Line Award, and I'm looking for any mention of Freemasonry. This is stupid. I don't even know why they put that there. Oh, here we go. Leighton Ward worked as clerk of the Federal Postal Court. Uh... was arrested 2017 charged with various offenses including fraudulent schemes and artifices and creating false documents paper terrorism uh, the court eventually revoked his self-representation in August 2017 after Miller suffered a heart attack one of his longtime collaborators Russell J Gould published a video in which he purported to court martial Miller it was a military court-martial, by the way, which is ridiculous, and I've explained that in other videos. To remove his authority as a judge, the website of Miller's Federal Postal Court later went offline because Leighton Lionel Ward ran that website. Gould has since continued using the quantum grammar created by Miller, Miller taking part in judicial proceedings and claiming to be the Postmaster General of the World or the Sovereign King of the United States. The Sovereign King of the United States? I've never heard that. Okay, I have to look that up. I've never heard that. This is what happens when you follow breadcrumbs, folks. Okay, so this paper claims that he's sovereign king, but I don't think Russell ever claimed to be sovereign. He does claim to be Postmaster General, which I've thrown a little bit of doubt onto that because he autographed 
but he didn't autograph over the postal bullet stamp. He put a cursive signature over it, which that's cursive writing. That's the same as italics. It's not on the page. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there as far as this is uh, anti, explicitly racist and anti-Semitic beliefs that underpin the white supremacist movement. That's a load of bullshit. Wow. Anyways, no reference at all to Freemasonry. That is so interesting to me. Look at Black's Law, so many meanings and context. Well, yeah, that's the, uh, the Bar Association's dictionary. It's not my dictionary. Only in the context of what they mean does it have any meaning. Not in the context of what I mean. I as the authority of my construct. So, anyways, you can go on to the David Wynn Miller Wikipedia page and you can find all kinds of examples uh, of correct sentence structure being talked about on the internet. And a lot of these cases will come from around the time period of 2012 for some reason. Hey, Chow community, thank you for sharing the live. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Pro C plaintiffs Gloria J. Pate and David Miller filed a complaint against defendants Argent Mortgage Company, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. Does anybody know what that means? Because I'm not sure that people do know what it means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in here. All adult citizens have the constitutional right to represent themselves in court. If you represent yourself, you are called pro se, pro per, or self-represented litigant. And you are acting as your own attorney. That, folks, is a mouthful. First of all, rights come from an authority. So if you participate with rights, then that means you have given something authority over you. In this context, the Constitution. So if you consider yourself to be a citizen, you can parse that word and find out what citizen actually means, then you also consent to the Constitution having authority over you, then you can have what is known as rights. And you can represent yourself in court. RE means no. PRE means no. And then sent. So that's a no, no sent. You are called a pro se. PRO means no. So that means no se. No per or self, no, no sent in the past tense. You see how ridiculous this stuff goes, gets when you actually know grammar and suffixes and prefixes and how all these things work? It's particles of negation. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. 
so let's look at mm, okay so pro se inartful pleading <laughs> what does that mean the Supreme Court has instructed the federal courts to liberally construe the inartful pleading of pro se litigants Even liberally construed, however, the purported allegations in the complaint are completely incoherent and utterly fail to state any kind of claim against any defendant that is remotely plausible on its face. Plaintiff's complaint is nonsensical and lacks any discernible relationship to any basis for judicial relief. It does not contain coherent or complete sentences, let alone identify any specific claims. Okay. The ten single-spaced pages of the complaint are random collection of unintelligible words, symbols, and initials laid out in no apparent order. Okay. See, there's a stamp. So, here's the thing. When you go into a court, the foreign vessel and dry dock, if you go into, say, a court in California, and they speak English there, English language, but you, you are from China and you speak Mandarin, they have to provide you with an interpreter. They have to. Because it would be unfair if they didn't. I mean, it's a mockery from pillar to post, but you get my meaning. You get my drift. They, they give the illusion that it's fair, but it's not. But they have to provide an interpreter. When you see things like this, in these days... In 2012, Miller and Gould would file these things, these document contract postal vessel court venues, but they would give no translation of it. Their basic demeanor was that the court should know this. It's up to them. Or, or maybe it was an assumption that the, that, the, that the judges did know this and chose to ignore it. But any assumption presumption is incorrect. Uh, with correct sentence structure, there is no presumption assumption. So the way that I've uh, styled my teaching method is I will create a correct sentence structure document contract postal vessel court venue, but I will also translate it into plain simple English in brackets and italics so that the facts are there and then it's also translated so there can be no room for misunderstanding so that no one can write out a, a, a document like this saying oh it's incomprehensible oh I don't know what they meant oh it's a jumble of symbols and blah 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 they can't do that not only that do I provide a written translation into plain simple English of the, the correct sentence structure communication, but I also make myself available to teach it. If they so choose, I can explain it to them. I am the translator in my own court. My document contract postal vessel court venue. I'm the document contract court authority, i.e. judge. And so that's why I think that that's a big part of the successes that uh, I've had with it as well as you know some of my students is that we do that we go that extra mile we don't just assume that the other people you know the the guys in the frilly black dresses that sit up on the third master mason plane in that foreign vessel and dry dock that they know quantum grammar I mean I, I can't, I'm not going to assume that so I do every possible thing 
to uh, make sure that they know what it is that I'm saying and the position I'm holding. So I think that's the difference between 2012 and now. Um, there's been a lot of advances in this, and this is all available for free on my YouTube channel, folks. All the grammar knowledge that I possess is available on my YouTube channel. All right, so one more thing I'm going to look at. <laughs> this comes from here. Let me let me show you real quick before I go into that. This is the main page, something called Small Change, Big Profits. What a hook line, huh? Quantum Grammar Coaching and Seven Day Quick Start. Okay, if you look at this, it says Quantum Grammar Coaching. Look. Look at this page. I don't know what anybody's knowledge level of Quantum Grammar is on TikTok. But if you've been with me watching this video, you can look at this and see that there is absolutely no evidence of Quantum Grammar knowledge on this page because there is no quantum grammar on this page. This is written in cursive, which means it's not there. Then you have quantum grammar coaching, ampersand, seven hyphen day, quick start. So that's adjective, 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 conjunction, adjective, pronoun, and then a break in the continuance of the evidence, and an adjective, 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 conjunction, adjective, pronoun, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. This is all fictitious conveyance of grammar. But this is someone who's making money off of claiming to know correct sentence structure. But yet they show no evidence. And someone named Jasper, I guess. Who is it? Let's see if we can uh, find out who that is. Who is Quantum Grammar Coach? Jasper Topham. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I have Googled that name and found nothing. I found Jasper with an AR at the end of Jasper, but not Jasper with an ER. No idea who this guy is. Anyways, this is a five second proof God exists. Watch this. Proof God exists in about five seconds. So we have proof is an adjective, God is an adjective, exists is an adjective, and is a pronoun. About is an adverb. Five is an adjective. And seconds is a pronoun. Before there is something, there is nothing. How do you know that? How do you know that something just hasn't always been there? Like, for example, the continuum. I know that the continuum continues. I don't know if it started. I don't know if it ends. There's no way I can certify that. I just know that it continues. So this is what is known as a false premise. It's a logical fallacy, folks. Again, military psyops. Hello. Before there is something, there is nothing. But then there are those people out there that would be like, you know what? That's, that makes sense. That's so profound. That makes sense. But they don't think about how they can certify that. There's no way to certify that, that statement. So they try and hook you in and draw you in. And since nothing makes nothing, nothing makes nothing. So if before there is something, there's nothing, nothing makes nothing. And now that there is something, it must be that nothing is God. So if nothing is synonymous with God, then God makes nothing. That's creating the something. No. 
they've just created dichotomies and oxymorons in there because they just said nothing makes nothing. And then they said nothing is God. So God makes nothing. Or are they saying that nothing makes God? <laughs> so with oh, so now they're saying that that is proof that God exists. No. That just proves that there's a sucker born every day. But I know that you, the viewer that are watching this right now, and I are probably not, hopefully not a part of those suckers. Because this is a fishing trip. And I'm sure they've reeled in so many people using this false premise and this dichotomy. It's bullshit, folks. Bullshit, bullshit. All right. So I'm going to go over to my YouTube channel show you real quick here so it says here I have 768 videos well that is true there are 768 public videos alright but there's also a member section with a lot of live streams that are not public so it's over 800 videos close to 900 videos on this channel you can see here this is correct sentence structure. So you can see the links to this TikTok channel, my Twitter, Coral Blade Grotto, Instagram, and then my personal website over there. And then we got the live videos. You got my podcast for the quantum grammar shoot. The playlist section is very important. We got the TikTok streams, cognitive conjecture, quantum grammar shoot, audits, spontaneous streams, continuum kinds of conversations, skits, viewers comments, and the most important ones would be the parts of speech, parse correct sentence structure and syntax. The community section is also very helpful. You can find some interesting things in there, all grammar related. And membership section, channels, uh, Raise Wisdom is uh, my best correct sentence structure student. Uh, his name is Colin Ricardo Colar Marseille. Shout out to him. He's a brother and a trusted confidant. And we've been knowing each other and working together for a few years now. And then, of course, it's about me. And the email address, blah, blah, blah. So there you have it. Thank you for joining me. Hope this was entertaining. I got my two streams in so that I can continue using this studio. This TikTok studio. I'm going to do more things like this. Because I feel like people like to see this. And there is an endless amount of content out there with regards to this type of video you know going through breadcrumbs on the internet finding out the history of correct sentence structure now I've been blessed you know over the since 2017 when I first started this journey to have gotten to know many people who also know Russell J Gould and David Wynn Miller personally like they were there when these things were happening and so I also have a personal perspective from them. Whether they're telling the truth or not, I mean, who's to say? What I'm saying is it's more data to consider. So I have some things to consider that is not that are not known to the public. 
But what we're doing here is trying to look at stuff that's publicly available to you so that you can certify a credential, make your own mind up about what's going on. Or not about this grammar. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs>